Budget Committee. Good morning. So the recommendation for this is to um, add one million for staffing, and uh, after a brief presentation, I'd like a um, recommendation or, or a, any comments from LAO or finance on it as well. So please start. Thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Felix De La Torre. I'm the chief. Uh, sorry, the general counsel for PERB, and uh, our agency has looked at the recommendation. And while we agree there is a need, we haven't fully vetted this proposal and therefore we're uh, remaining neutral on the uh, proposal. Thank you. I move the recommendation as outlined in staff comment. Second. Thank you for that. And before taking roll call, um, just want to hear if there's uh, some comments from uh, finance. Thank you. Natalie Daniel, Department of Finance. We believe this request is premature. The Department of Finance has not been able to review this particular request, so we're unsure what problems the proposal would fix and if this proposal is an appropriate solution. Additionally, we're unsure how this request accounts for historical vacancies, expenditures, or workload. We have no information about what factors are driving the reported $500,000 projected deficit, and we're unable to comment on if we agree with this projection. Lastly, we're uncertain what future workload assumptions were made and what specific workload demands are the proposal references, so we have no metrics or projections for staffing outcomes. For these reasons, we request that the proposal be addressed in the fall process. The Department of Finance is committed to working with PERB over the summer and fall to comprehensively review their departmental needs. Thank you. Public comment? Mr. Chair, a members of committee, Christy Bauma, uh, representing the California professional firefighters who are constituents of the Public Employment Relations Board as all of our um, uh, disputes go before that board. And while they're not sure about the lack of workload, I'll explain a workload issue as my firefighters who have had cases before per per up to five years. And if you are trying to resolve a dispute and proceed uh, with your uh, labor relationships, management labor relationships in an effective manner, waiting five years uh, for a resolution is no resolution and just continues the fractured relationship. So we think this is a, a baby step, baby step on the issue. We appreciate the support of the committee moving this forward so that maybe more eyes can be on the proposal and suggest that this should be an even, even greater priority for the support of this agency. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, good evening. My name is Michael Young. I'm here on behalf of the California Labor Federation. Uh, we believe that the, this increase is sorely needed uh, over, the last few, over the last decade. The numbers of workers that are uh, that are that are covered under PERB has increased drastically while staffing is going down. Uh, as Christy said, for the firefighters, the long-term issues in terms of the wait for resolutions of cases has been tremendous and impacted workers greatly. Uh, I'll say again, I think this increase is greatly needed. Now we ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Tristan Brown with the California School Employees Association, also been asked by the Service Employees International Union to uh, support the comments that you've already heard. The increased workload to the board has been pretty immense, uh, and we support the augmentation to increase funding so that they can meet that new workload. Thank you. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Nazarian? Aye. Cooper? Aye. Weber? Aye. Wilk? Nay. Thank you. Next item. Issue number 10, having to do with outreach under EDD. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, my name is Paul Riches. I'm here on behalf of Assembly Lynn Daly, who regrets he cannot be here today. He's in Southern California. Uh, he has requested that we increase the effort on outreach for the paid family leave program uh, in light of the declining awareness of the program among the workers who pay for it. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Hi, Jenny. Great. Any other comments? Uh, Greg Williams at EDD. We're just we're neutral. It's not our, posi our proposal. So. Um, this is, I'm Jenya Cassidy and I work with the California Work and Family Coalition and we worked on the um, passing the first bill and we continue to work um, for the last 10 years with different organizations across the state to try to wear, raise awareness around paid family leave and um, you know recently information came out through a field poll that not only is um, awareness really low especially among um, very specific groups low income Latino new immigrant and young workers, and especially in Los Angeles County, but also the awareness of the program has dipped. So we have um, something like, it's dipped by 46%, and we have even less people aware of the program than when it was first passed. So we have this issue of um, workers, you know, in the, um, across the state paying into a program that they really can't make use of when they, when they don't know about it and they don't know that, what they can use it for. So we are, um, you know, working really hard, and we're working with the EDD just to talk about how what is the best way to do outreach, and the funding is um, very important because it, there's just no, you know, way for people to access the program. That's the first big hurdle is having the information. Thank you, uh, finance and LEO. Um, Natalie Daniel, Department of Finance. Last year, a three-year pilot program for expanded paid family leave outreach was approved. The current year budget allows for $1 million to conduct market research for an outreach program. Uh, currently, budget year and budget year plus one already have allocated $5.5 million for marketing efforts. We feel that it's premature to add additional funds until the impacts of the pilot study can be further assessed. Thank you, and, and Mr. Cooper, if you don't mind, I'm gonna be asking you to withdraw the recommendation because I wanna make a quick comment and a change. While, while I agree um, that these programs have merit and it's extremely important to get the word out because you don't want the funding to just stay in a certain pot and not to be exercised. Um, I, I, think, I think it'll probably be important for us to, uh, for this item as well as the next, but we'll hear from the next item, um, to reduce both to one million and uh, and see on an ongoing basis what the continued need would be. So if I can have a motion to uh, uh, for uh, one million. Chair's recommendation. Second. Nazarian? Aye. Cooper? Aye. Weber? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Thank you. As for the next item, having to relating to issue 11 under Department of Industrial Relations, uh, can I also entertain a motion for uh, 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 approving one million? Second. Nazarian? Aye. Al uh, Alan Cooper? Aye. Weber? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next item is issue 12. Uh, we heard about this extensively for about two hours yesterday. Uh, Governor's May revision proposal relating to development agencies. Thank you, Mr. Hill, for being here. If you want to just make a brief comment. Uh, certainly. Good morning. Chris Hill, Department of Finance. Um, the proposal before you today is uh, vastly different from the one we brought you with the, um, um, earlier when we presented um, a couple months ago. Um, it no longer seeks to undo reentered agreements, so it no longer um, touches upon those lawsuits. Those reentered agreements are allowed to stand. We create a tiered method for expending some of the stranded 2011 bond proceeds. 
We create a pathway to findings of completion for um, successor agencies that have payment plans for their um, due diligence review audit finding remittances. And we also address a host of other um, issues that have been longstanding in the local government arena, including um, negative bailout issues for um, four counties, Stanislaus, Trinity, Lassen, and Plumas. Um, we address tax equity allocation issues in the county of Santa Clara. We address an issue in San Benito County regarding educational revenue augmentation fund payments. And um, we also um, address um, an issue in Riverside County regarding four um, cities that owe the county $24 million for services rendered under contract. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And before that, I just want to make sure, since we had some folks from local uh, jurisdictions here, uh, are, is there anyone in the room that would like to uh, make additional public comment at this time? Okay. Any comments from LAO on top? Great. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Nazarian? Aye. Cooper? Aye. Weber? Aye. Wilk? Nay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the uh, uh, issues number uh, 13 and 14, Department of Veterans Affairs. Thank you for the opportunity here today uh, to talk about the CVSO increase in subvention funding. As you know, um, the CVSOs were afforded $3 million additional funding for, through subvention last year for claims processing at CVSO offices throughout the state. The program, the additional funds have been incredibly successful and in recent metrics provided by the County Veteran Service Officers and collected by CalVet. Over 13,000 claims are directly attributable to these folks that have been hired up in this position, um, resulting in over $32 million in compensation and pension benefits coming back to California veterans. Uh, additionally, there was, uh, they started an ID card program throughout the state at the CVSOs with over 20,000 of those folks receiving ID cards. It worked effectively as another way to get them into the office where once they're in there, we're able to identify any other benefits they may have available to them and 19 over 19 percent of those folks resulting in about over a little over 4,000 claims were filed through that activity as well um, claims numbers throughout the country the VA continues to break records every year in terms of the number of claims they're filing we don't expect that to change any time in the future um, so clearly there's a lot of work to be done additionally the CVSOs have new legislation will offer veterans the opportunity to have veteran designation on their license plates come November 11th. So we're expecting um, a lot of traffic to the offices at that point, which will significantly increase their workload and, and hopefully it result in um, veterans throughout the state, additional veterans throughout the state getting connected with the compensation and pension benefits they deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments from uh, LA or finance? Uh, any? Juliana yes. Ramos, Department of Finance. Just want to indicate for the record that Department of Finance is opposed. Thank you. Any public comments on this? Mr. Mayor, Chairman, members, Pete Conaty representing the County Veterans Service Officers and 14 other veterans groups, and we're in obviously strong support of this measure, and we want to thank the uh, Assembly for all the work they've done on this issue. Uh, I was trying to figure out what three million out of three billion over estimate of income is, but I, it's beyond my mental capacity. Uh, but I do need to point out, as much success as we have, if you analyze it, one in every four veteran that comes in to get an ID card finds out he's eligible for vet, he or she's eligible for veterans. 
And I think in California, only about 18% of our veterans are receiving federal benefits. So we have a long way to go with outreach. But at the end of the day, uh, the veterans will get the benefits, California veterans will get the benefits they, er they earned, and the state will see a continued growth in federal benefits coming back to California. So we have a lot to do in the way of outreach, and uh, we also have a lot to do. We have to continue to work with our partners at CDVA, the strike teams down at the regional offices. Thank you. Thank you for making that comment because uh, uh, the recommendation will be to approve three million ongoing and to continue a strike force program until the uh, backlog is eliminated. Do I have a motion? Second. Nazarian? Aye. Cooper? Aye. Weber? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Thank you. Uh, issue number 14, having to do with district hospitals, is a technical change. Um, so just with that, is there a motion, since it's a technical? Thank you. Uh, unless, uh, before the roll call, unless if there's any public comments on it. Nope. <laughs> Nazarian? Aye. Cooper? Aye. Weber? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Back to issue uh, number one and the items to be heard, and this will be our final item uh, from the Secretary of State. Good morning, Chair, members. Kim Gautier, Deputy Secretary of State Operations. Um, we're here before you with a proposal for continuation of the California Business Connect project. We've had several discussions with you recently, so I think you're aware of the status. The Secretary of State would like to impart to you that uh, continuation of this funding is vital to the Secretary of State's office and also to the State of California. Denial of the proposal would mean that automation for businesses and filing and starting up in California would be delayed by years. As we previously expressed to you, we are in discussions with the highest rankings uh, people at the Department of uh, Technology and also with the vendor on steps forward. The Secretary of State has experienced some issues in the project and having run one successful project currently in VoCal, we recognize those issues and have immediately taken steps to try to correct the issues and move forward with a proposal. And that's currently where we're at with regard to our discussions with the vendor and the Department of Technology. We ask for your support in this proposal. Thank you. Uh, James Schwab on behalf of Secretary of State Alex Padilla. Uh, as Chief of Legislative Affairs, I'm here to also uh, request that you accept this budget line item. Uh, from day one, as soon as the Secretary took office, this was identified as a source of a problem. And since that day, we've worked to find a solution. And unfortunately, the timeline for that solution does not fall within the budget timeline. Um, we can't share any details of the ongoing discussions, but the Secretary is confident that we can come to a solution and he's committed to updating this committee as frequently as necessary. We have no comments at this time. No comments. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, part of the reason, I have to admit, part of the reason I was late to the subcommittee meeting was because I was on, on the phone with the secretary. Um, um, while there's still a lot of issues that need to be more specific and for us to better understand, I also do... Uh, appreciate that some things cannot be discussed because of the ongoing issues. So uh, at this point, and given the strong urging of, of, of the Secretary himself, uh, I'm inclined to approve the request, um, but would like to uh, ask the Department to come back uh, not only next January to give an update, but when we are having a interim hearing in fall, I'd like for you to bring an update on how the discussions are going on an ongoing basis. So um, with that, unless if there's any public comment, uh, would like 
Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I was inclined not to support it. I mean, I supported the additional expenditure last year that we told <clears throat> that was going to resolve this issue. Obviously, it hasn't. We do have a new Secretary of State whom I've known a long time. I have confidence in, and with you uh, asking for them to report back at, at our interim hearing, I'm comfortable uh, voting aye this morning. Great. Great. Yes. Okay. I move that recommendation. Thank you. I'll second that. And, and Chair, I'd ask when they come back in the fall, they give a very detailed report where they are. If you're further behind, I mean, not, it's got to be detailed and tell exactly what's transpired from now till then. Certainly. Thank you. Roll call, please. Nazarian? Aye. Cooper? Aye. Um, Weber? Aye. Wilk? Aye. Great. With that, uh, at this point, we're going to open roll call for Mr. Cooper. Item number two. Aye. And issue, issue number five is a motion to uh, conform to the Senate. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are done.